So I'm working on the last movement of Mozart's K332 Sonata in F major, and one thing I noticed about this is that it has so many ingredients of technical transfer, meaning you have legato um, phrases that use some rotation, you have detached eighth notes that don't are not played very clipped in staccato, but almost you could say they're detached pressed notes, portato or whatever the word is, maybe some people would say tenuto, but they're certainly not, in, in many instances in this particular piece, in my opinion, um, really crisp, sort of finger staccato driven uh, detached notes. But there are places where the composer does have actual dot, staccato dots on notes. So you have to differentiate between those notes and the ones that are detached but don't have the staccato marks on them. So it's a great opportunity to use a variety of touches in, in this piece. In the very beginning of this, and I'm going to do back tempo in, in the practicing of it, the very opening is, is a descending arpeggio really that's, that has some lower neighbors. Um, it's like you're going through inversions of the F major chord. So what you're doing here is you're going toward these principal notes. That kind of thing. Or the thread through the, these, this series of notes so that doesn't sound so robotic. F, C, A, F, see how I'm shaping toward the notes I sang out and it, it does require a bit of leaning through toward those notes and that way you have more of a, a beautiful phrase when you go quickly you're still going to be thinking of that rotation that gives you an idea of you know how that evolves from finding the the structural tones in which you're aiming for as you go through that passage. Now also the left hand, now here's the case of the left hand, um, in my opinion, not having a crisp detached left hand right in this place, but more of this. Maybe it's a, a, using a forearm because you have to have a forte here. <laughs> does have an SF on the um, left hand D flats. That means only applies to the left because it's written below the, the left hand note. So also what you want to do, this can get very tight. This, these these sometime octaves going into ninths because you have to rotate because, because you have a ninth sometimes. If you block it, here's the ninth. Here's the seventh octave seven. Now it's easier because now you have smaller intervals, but you absolutely need a bit of a rotation in the right hand, like right here. Rotate. Were you thinking of turning a door ever so slightly? And here again, when we work on scales and arpeggios and staccato and sixths and thirds and all this, any octaves weaves into this piece. So you want to have the you want to have the um, tools to uh, apply to the piece. A slow mo. All together. Another place is now where he has a contrasting theme. Uh, which is uses in the right hand, he has staccato dots on it, the left hand doesn't. But even before that, this is something I went over with a student, the idea of re reading between the lines in a piece is very important. If you sometimes see an F under a series of notes, it may not be the wise thing to do to start the forte right where you see the uh, forte mark, because it might not be musical. And I'll give you an example in this new place. When he goes a second time, 
where I wanted to say that I wouldn't slam on the B flat here even though the forte mark is on the B flat I would roll into the depth of the key after the first B flat and in slow-mo so we have parallel six now here comes the forte now I don't really want to come very hard down on this because I'm rolling into what's the two chord, the G minor chord. So I'm going to roll into the dead weight like this. Like that. And here again, what's inferred is you have a dominant resolving to a tonic, but he doesn't have the um, soft on the resolution note. He has the, the new dynamic level after the resolution, which was the up. And that also tells us that we can't slam down on a tonic resolution, but we can then go to the next section and start a new dynamic level. So. At least dip it a little bit. Dip it a little bit, because now you have this contrasting theme coming Dolce, and um, it certainly has to be different than what just preceded it. But and here's that thumb that can't crash. We learned from technique that thumb is a, not a finger that is a short finger. We want to be careful that it doesn't fall down hard and interrupt a phrase. Now, here's what I was talking about where this particular piece uses different kinds of detached note approaches. Um, we already know we were going. Uh, when he does a left hand in this new section where there's a contrasting theme, I would keep that. that. However, in the right hand, he's got the short dots on the notes, so they're not going to be the same as how I'm approaching this press lift kind of left hand. I'm going to be shorter in the right hand. So after I come out of in slow-mo, to be really sensitive to different detached note touches. Where he comes in with, now here's another place. Let's go over to here in slow-mo. This is a sweet section. Now you have to make sure this is a pagiatura from below. This is a lean less. This is a dissonant harmony. I mean, left hand, which underlines the harmony underpinning. Uh, falls into the F. So that's another thing to be aware of, the lean, and the lean has its own tactile feeling. So you have this. No sooner than you've done that, you have a series of syncopated, um, what we call the magogic accents in the right hand, which goes through the root third fifth of the tonic, F major, and comes down in the dominant, and he has FPs on them, so that means he, on the right hand, he wants a little emphasis here again, another set of detached notes that requires a different approach. So if we come from here, slow. So those were the FPs. He has in both hands um, staccato dots. Uh, so now we have even another touch. We have this. Definitely that. Dominant.
and that takes a different physical approach. The first page is all this rip-roaring passage work and kind of uh, high-intensity um, fortes and detached notes, and suddenly, in the midst of this, we have that I think you just rock it, and it's like a lullaby there. You feel it in two, but you want to make sure when you get there that something different emotionally, affectively is felt from what you've done before, especially when it does this. So these will just give you a little bit of ideas about what's going on here. Another place where he rolls the left hand, and this is, you know, most of the pianists I've heard, the very fine pianists, um, do the detached left hand against the legato right hand when you have a string of sixteenths. However, there's certain places you can't do that. Uh, even though Mozart doesn't show slurs in the uh, Urtex edition, the measure of 50, you have this uh, kind of minor uh, variation of, um, uh, of, of, of a melody. You have C minor, you have this, you have this. Definitely, I would not play that detached in the left hand. It just doesn't make sense. That's another inference. The inference and the subject of today's discussion is also what is inferred uh, that isn't actually written in the music. What's inferred here is a legato left hand. So this is just this gives you a basic idea of certain things. Number one, you have to decide your different forms of detached notes. You have to decide what are really crisp release notes, what are press release notes, more like portados or tenudos, whatever you want to call it. Um, you have to know that when you see a forte under a particular place in the music that it may not mean to play forte right away. It may mean you need to resolve uh, dominant to a tonic and then go into a, a forte. Uh, so you have to almost have a sense of where you're going in the music, where you're coming from. Rotation is a big part of this movement. Now the other issue is with that opening, how do you get power? He does, he, it doesn't say forte in the beginning. It does not say, I'm inferring that it should be forte. My edition, which is the Urtex, has no dynamic. Um, it has a dynamic when he repeats it. I'm assuming it should be forte. Now, if you want to get a forte out of this, it's total dead weight. It's still the same rotation, but it's like you're doing this. And I pointed this out in my piano fitness video that, you know, you're pushing off the keys. That's how you get the dead weight leverage is doing that. so slightly through the six and that's another place for tactile and you know taking your technique tools and bringing them to the to the piece <laughs> 